the Precious Metals Hangout Hub. Uh, Rusty, I'm doing great and look forward to our brief 15 minute chat. <laughs> yeah, 15 minutes. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right, so what happened last week? Let, let's see. Uh, Friday there was another raid on the silver market and gold market. Everything was closed way down. Uh, all week it was bullish, like we talked about. It looked bullish. It was bullish. And then on Friday, all of a sudden, uh, it, uh, silver especially closed down below 22, which was the, the uh, support for a couple weeks there. And it broke down. And it doesn't look good for silver. It looks like uh, it's on its way to, uh, I think, bottom is uh, below 20. I think anything below 20, we should start buying the heck out of it. And um, demand is still increasing. As the price goes lower, demand is increasing. So everyone's on board. What do you think about that, Colin? Well, um, the paper market is looking like it's going to go down to 18 to 19 dollars probably uh, just because of the momentum to the downside unfortunately you know there's nothing anybody can really do about it except to do what you just said which is go buy physical if it gets down into these giveaway prices practically and you know go from there because uh, if it gets down to 18 bucks you know, it, the, the, the demand, I think, is going to spike again. So I don't know how many it times already, you're going to... It already has. Yeah. It I don't know how spikes. many times you're going to... Go Sorry. Sorry. I mean, how many times are they going to push it down below 20 and have the demand spike again and again? I mean, not many more times. So this, in theory, could be the last time people are going to see it there. So it, it's, yeah. a, it's a super buying opportunity if it happens. And it looks like it, it's going to happen, like you said. Yeah, well, the cat's out of the bag, um, and it, it just, uh, last week, uh, Silver Doctors came out with that report uh, that the CME posted a disclosure on their website saying that they cannot guarantee anything that the bankers tell them about inventory that, uh, pertaining to gold and silver, and they're talking about allocated gold and silver that the bullion banks are supposed to be trading with. Um, are supposed to be holding for clients, and uh, the CME says uh, uh, we can't be responsible for what this the the bankers are telling us. There's no audit, uh, and uh, you know the silver doctor says um, this might be a signal for the comics default. Well, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It, 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 it's a huge flag. I mean, I listened to something that that Bill Murphy over at, over at Gata said, you know, right after that uh, press release came out, he was like, you know, screaming and screaming and screaming and going, "What have we been doing for twelve years except say that?" You know, right? And the CME just admits it. Oh, the bullion yeah. banks are lying. Um, we can't be held responsible. You can't sue us because we don't believe it either. <laughs> It's, 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 it's hot potato. It's hot yeah. potato time, man. I mean, everybody wants to get out of the out of the middle of the train wreck. Uh, right. We will see what happens next, but there's a lot of lot of moving parts right now. Well, you know, the the plan of the of the the bullion banks is uh, to push down the paper price as much as they can to squeeze out sh uh, weak hands, uh, the long the long weak hands. And it's not working. Um, and, and another uh, aspect too, I don't think people are buying into the paper market anymore. That's why the paper price is failing. Um, uh, people, people know now, and if for a few weeks, uh, you know, legitimately, that there is no gold and silver in the bullion banks inventory. <clears throat> so. Well, it's they're they're, 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 just, they're they're gonna they're gonna throw down as hard as they can the paper price to shake out any any weak hands left, gobble up anything they can left uh, before it collapses. That's what I think is going on. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. 
Well, that, and, and I agree that, that some version of what you just said is, is probably the most likely scenario. I mean, uh, you know, I've been wrong for 25 months on the price of silver <laughs> as it's come down and yeah, come down and well, come down. So, you know, we, we're talking. We, we, we'll never be right if, because it's all manipulated. These people are not following market fundamentals. And um, well, like you said, not. I, I, you know, I, as you said earlier, uh, as the price goes down, uh, we'll see increasing demand because it's going to be cheap. Well, Silver Doctor said just that their sales alone on last Friday spiked three times as much than the previous three weeks. So, yes, you're right. Well, Demand is going I mean, up as the paper price goes down. And it's backfiring on the bank. What I like about the last, you know, what I like about the last few weeks is that demand has stayed strong even through all this recent uncertainty and you, you, we don't really need that. I mean, I guess the premiums have come have shrunk a lot since uh, yeah, you know, April yeah. 15th. They've, they've come all the way back. But demand uh, has really been strong all the way through until today, pretty much. And it did, you, you don't take, you don't need these things to go on super sale. But I mean, we may legitimately get a break of that $20 price in the next few days. You were mentioning before we went on the air that. Uh, you know, China, uh, I believe it was China, is on holiday for one or two or three days. Yeah, perfect chance for the bankers to smash the paper price between Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday because the Chinese uh, exchanges are on holiday. Perfect chance for this to happen. This is coming from Silver Doctors. So. Yep, well, they... They don't miss a trick, so it's, it's you're probably right. No, well, it's, it's the best reports coming out every week, so we got you know who are we gonna follow? Well, what I'm talking about is the, the the bad guys who are doing these you know massive manipulation in, in the paper markets. They're gonna you know they're gonna realize that uh, this is their a uh, huge window of opportunity to. Uh, get the price down even further. Now, I think ultimately, you know, they're, they're, they've, there's a limit to it, and I think this $20 price and nearby below that $18 maybe, you know, we're, we're hit, we're plumbing the bottoms of what they can go for, but they're going to try it. There's no question. Yeah, they may cover their shorts um, while the Chinese are sleeping. Uh, anything could happen. Um, I just, I just, I just believe the cats out of the bag, uh, and whoever's trading, um, you know, the silver and gold futures markets, uh, have got to just know by now that th it's just a made up, uh, paper, it's nothing more than just paper trading. There's no, no nothing going on, and I think the excitement will, will leave that, that market. And um, it will be easier for the bankers to knock it down to 18, 18 and a half. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're, I mean, you're I, right. I, I mean, there's no volume. Um, but there's huge, huge, the big divergence in the physical market. Huge amounts of demand. Even on Friday when they smashed it below 22. Silver Doctor said even just in their... Uh, their dealership alone was three times as much volume. And everybody knows they got to pick this stuff up because sooner or later the COMEX is going to uh, go away and the, the spot price is going to be um, reviewed by the uh, Shanghai Exchange because it's backed by, by the real stuff. So I think the, I think the game's over for the COMEX. I, I, I think we're I getting mean, the sun... Sign. We're getting the signs for that. And the other thing, I would, my last comment would be, Rusty, is that you know silver stackers who are buying now at a at a, at a smash down below you know twenty on its way to eighteen and a half, as we talked about, the premiums have come back down too. So people who are buying now are getting even a better you know gross price, I think, 
versus what they were getting, you know, three or four weeks ago when the premiums ballooned to, you know, six and seven dollars. Yeah, maybe that'll happen again. Well, anyways, it's we'll backfiring see. on the bankers because the demand yep. is so much higher than, uh, and no one's selling. No one's selling the physical, but they they're selling the the, co the contracts. I mean. Uh, and, but you know, as far as I can tell, they're not buying them back. Um, why would they? It, I mean, I mean to buy the well, to buy the futures is, is a lot of money. Well, I mean, you know, when you're when you're, it's really just a casino, just a casino. I mean, now it now it is. I mean, it's just, uh, just trading. Yeah. All right, so on to uh, other stuff. Uh, you know, we always go back to the Silver Doctor review, but uh, there was a good uh, interview with Greg Hunter. We love Greg Hunter. He's great. He was a mainstream media uh, guy that went off on his own. He's doing great. I love listening to him. Um, he came out with an interview last week with uh, Catherine Austin Fitz, uh, which is a well-versed uh I wouldn't call her an economics major person like uh, Jim Willie is, but uh, she knows the financial world more so than uh, a lot of people out there. So did, did you listen to that interview there, Colin? Yeah, I did. Uh, she's very, very impressive. She, she's been... Uh, you know, part of uh, high-level government administration. She's run her own business. She's and she puts she ties together very much so like like Jim Willie does in a, in a different uh, way the socio-political yeah. uh, economic ramifications yeah. of all these things that are going on right now. I think the the two of them, Jim Willie and Catherine Austin Fitz, really put it together in a holistic way. You know, she in that interview she kept saying. Let's look at it in a big picture. Let's look at it in a, in a, you know, in a, in a big picture kind of way. And she just draws it out perfectly. Um, a highly intelligent interview by Greg Hunter. Yeah, it's um, it's really well well worth anybody's time to to search that out. Not too hard on YouTube. And listen to that interview. It's I think probably 40 minutes long. Or, uh, maybe I'm wrong. Is it? Maybe it's a lot shorter than that. 30, 37 and was, a half. I, know, I was close. 40 <laughs> minutes. It, 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 it goes. It goes by like it's like 10 minutes. There's so much good information in there. Oh yeah. It, I, I listened think, to it. I think. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I think Greg. I think Greg Hunter says about you know asks, asks about four questions and then she's off to the races in terms of these great answers. Yep. Uh, definitely an intelligent interview. Everyone should listen to it. And just the high points of the uh, interview was um, um, basically we don't have a economics problem. We have a geopolitical management problem. And the powers that be are centralizing power. And um, she's expecting inflation. Um, and she wants everyone to the interview is jam packed with information. I have, I listened to it three times, and I got four pages of notes. There's no way to get through it all. Um, but basically, uh, what at the end of the interview, she wants everyone to uh, realize that something is, you know, something's wrong out there. Inflation's going to be coming, and whether who you ever, whoever you listen to, or whatever you believe. Uh, you have to take care of your yourself and your your home. She wants to make sure that you know if you have if you have to pay for water, uh, sell some stock and buy a well. Uh, you know, uh, take care of of things that you have to take care of your liabilities because when inflation hits, if you have all these liabilities on your uh, balance sheets, you're not going to be able to um, to toe the line. Uh, you know, get a garden. Um, I like the aquaponics. Uh, do you know anything about aquaponics, there? I'm 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 certainly aware of it, and I've seen some really lab elaborate setups. And um, 
uh, but it's been a few years since I was intimate with anything like that. I know that you've tried to set up some uh, uh, sites yourself, right? Well, we have a, a friend of mine uh, helped me build a, a greenhouse, and so we have a greenhouse. Um, but inside the greenhouse, you can put a, a fish tank. And uh, what aquaponics is, basically, is uh, the water is filtered to from the fish tank, pumped into the garden, and it's full of nitrates. And the, the plants love it, feeding, and the water filters through a little system of you know uh, filtering out all the uh, all the crap, and pure water comes out and in, back into the fish tank. So the fish tank, the fish flourish. And then the nitrates goes into the uh, garden, and uh, I've seen a lot of this lately. Aquaponics for survivalists. Uh, it's not very complicated. You just need a um, you need some area. Uh, I've seen some people put it even even in their city apartment uh, room. Uh, you know, an extra room in their apartments in the cities. It doesn't take a lot of room. Uh, the garden flourishes so much because of the nitrate coming from the fish tank, and you, uh, you know, a five, five hundred gallon tank of, of water. I think that you can have a couple hundred fish in there, and so people are just uh, they're eating fish and fresh vegetables every night. I think it's a wonderful idea, and that's exactly what Catherine Austin Fitz was talking about. And you just gotta, if if you're paying for food, you know, figure out how not to pay for food or. Uh, you know, she said it's not for everybody, of course. Uh, and she said gold and silver isn't in for everybody either. <laughs> She's, what did she say? She said, uh, if you need a gun to protect it, it's worth having. I think that's the way she put it. Yeah, uh, she, she decked around gold and silver quite a bit, which was... She would, uh, <laughs> she would admit to actually go and buy gold and silver. She skirted around it. She didn't yep. want to be in that boat, I guess. Well, I think people. mainly she wanted to she wanted to make sure everyone knew that there was more important things than just gold and silver. That's that's what I that's what I really think. Well, I, I think a combination of your idea of getting prepared in, in, in a way that you can legitimately uh, prepare yourself with uh, aquaponics or uh, you know if you are if you're able to have your own garden, all these things are you know probably legitimately uh, higher on the, the scale of than having gold or silver where you're having to go out and buy stuff uh, or find people who you can buy it from and so I think that's what she's talking about Rusty she's talking about you know you know you know prioritizing and uh, making sure that you're aware that you're going to be have a problem with particularly inflation because 99% of the people in this country are not aware that they're going to have a big problem with inflation, and that's the issue. Uh, if they've got themselves set up to uh, be able to, uh, you know, solve some of their problems either by, you know, stacking the peanut butter jar in the in the pantry as much as you can, as well as stacking silver, you know, you're you're ahead of the game. You, you, people have to, you know research and figure out what all these small things they can do to make themselves better prepared. Yeah. Um, you know, we talk about gold and silver all the time, but you know that you know I, I have I have a year's worth of food. Um I have some guns. I have some bullets. You know, try to you know it's not all I, I don't think it's all about gold and silver. I, I think that if you have gold and silver, you're going to be able to buy those things that are on the shelves out in the stores. That's, that's, that's what I think. So if you need a gallon of gas and you have a silver dime, um, you might be able to get to work that day. Yeah. So. Um, well, no, there's, there are many different areas that people... Not a lot, but there are many different areas that people can consider doing, and it's all different. If you live in an apartment in New York City, or if you live on a, yeah. a small patch of land, you know, outside of a major city, you know, you've got different things you've got to deal with. Right. Um, yeah. So, anyways, uh, 
uh, one of the main points that Captain Austin Fitz went through, and we we got to wrap it up here, I think. I'm going to make these too long. It's already too long, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just keeping you I'm keeping you posted. Were we, were we past 15 minutes already? I, I sent you an email. I sent you a text, man. Did you get it? At, at 816? No. We, we are next. I, I don't know. I don't know when that popped through. I, I don't know. Anyways, uh, Catherine Austin Fitz uh, said that you know there's. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Where are we? At? Twenty minutes. Okay, we're good. We're good. Twenty minutes. <laughs> okay, so Catherine Austin Fitz. I, I have no perception of time. I'm, I'm sorry. That's okay. okay. Me neither. Catherine Austin Fitz. <laughs> Catherine Austin Fitz uh, said that uh, one of the main things that she, I think that stuck out is, you know, there's definitely inflation, there's uh, definitely a currency war on devaluation of assets, uh, which, you know, down the line it comes inflation in, in the form of inflation, which is a tax on all of us because it's, it's, it's a phantom tax, you know. Y you, your dollar is becoming worth less and you can purchase um, not as much each time. So, you know, no, uh, markets are not markets, and we've talked about this. Markets are not markets anymore. It's all geopolitical. You know, currency wars, devaluations, um, bond bubbles, you know, real estate bubbles. These are uh, World War Three. you know. You know, everyone wants to kill Syria for some reason. Uh, Turkey's going out of control with the people and, the, and calling it a revolution against the uh, the supposed democracy they've been having and censorships and uh, it's crazy. You know, they don't have a democracy and the people know it. Um, so liabilities are uh, one one final thing that Catherine Austin Fitz said is you know liabilities are stacking up on the government's balance sheets. And the corporations are gobbling up the the assets, the the um, you know real estate, the the gold and silver. I bet you they're buying tons of it because you know on on the government side they're printing out money, and as we all know, the Federal Reserve is a corporation, and their balance sheet is well over uh, two trillion dollars in assets, and this is in the past you know, seven years, eight years or something crazy. Um, so they're printing out money, taxing us on interest, and then buying up all the assets. Anyone think this is crazy? The, the few people who are, you know, paying attention and, and even care about all this uh, know that we've gone past the tipping point or the point of no return, you know, several <laughs> Several years ago, yeah, you're I right. think in the I think in the, in the in the early 2000s we still might have had a chance to do something, but at this point, yeah, uh, it's it's over, and everybody else, you know, the average person, you know, has no clue as to what's going on, and that's why yeah. the the small the small things are so important if they could even you know understand that they're going to have a major problem with inflation. I mean that. Just to know that, just to try to protect themselves uh, against against very high inflation, if not hyperinflation, that will be a big key. And but unfortunately, most people are going to be blindsided to that. Uh, we don't have a chance unless you uh, start preparing. And you know how you know how how else to warn everybody, but just to tell you all the problems. And if you can't put two and two together. Of what's going to happen eventually? Then, if you're caught with your shorts down, you know what? What are we going to do? What we tried to help you. You know, I have a, I have another website, how to build a greenhouse. You know, I, I made videos on, um, you know, uh, ins inside little uh, uh, germination room. You know, inside the closet with a little heat lamp, and the it's amazing how easy it is just to build a garden. Well, you know, some people can't have a garden, but you know, they might have a lawn. 
you know, they have this pretty nice little lawn out front uh, that they mow every week that's absolutely worthless. They can't eat it. <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh, you know, back in well, the day there was Victory Gardens, but... Yeah, I mean, the problem, I mean, the, the, if you if all you've got is a pretty little lawn out in front, like you said, it's worse It's worse than worthless. It's actually costing you money every month when you could be turning it around yeah. and, you know, getting some food out of it. Yeah, it's a liability. But that won't yeah. turn around until, <laughs> you know, and another thing is, you know, people don't realize how bad it is because there's no food lines anymore. It's all electronic. So, yeah. Um, they're just hiding everything from us. Uh, no one realizes it, and um, some people are saying that the World War, even even our own DHS is saying that you know World War Three, where they're pre they're preparing for World War Three, and um, I think I think Turkey's little uprising. Um, we're sending troops over to uh, Syria. Um, it, it's going to happen. There's going to be. I think Turkey was the flashpoint, and um, something's going to happen. I think if you if if you ask the average person why the United States uh, troops are are in Syria right now, uh, or any place, it's humanitarian. Like it's humanitarian, oh, okay. definitely humanitarian. Oh, we got to protect them. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, okay. That's not true. <laughs> um, he may be a dictator and all this other crap. You know, we have to go and spread our empire because he's a dictator. Um, there's other things going on here. Um, I don't think Syria is trading oil for dollars. They're trading it with Iran. They're trading it with Russia, China. You know, that's the reason. They want everyone on the dollar trading in dollars and these other countries are not trading in dollars that's why we have to go after Iran that's why we have to go after Venezuela you know uh, Gaddafi he had a, a gold dinar we went in there and confiscated all of his gold to I think 250 tons of it so something's gonna happen Russia's um, getting fed up I think yeah, no. Russia is an interesting play. Russia is an interesting player in this whole thing. You 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 got you got to wonder what they're thinking a lot of the time. Yeah, but I, I don't understand the fact that you know, oh, hate Russia, hate Russia, no, hate the Al Qaeda, hate you know, hate the Muslims, uh, Russia, Muslim, China, hate them all, hate them all, hate them for what? Uh, because they're not going along with your little Ponzi scheme, really? Ah, it, I don't. It, I don't get it. Where do? How do we come to this point where we have to force people to use our dollar, our debt? It's crazy. Anyways, we gotta go, man. Oh, what? That's all. I know that. There, my my answer to you, Rusty, is that that's all we got left is forcing people to use the dollar. If they want, if it voluntarily, yeah. it would be totally in the trash can. No. Yeah, exactly. We have to force them. It's the only thing left. And actually, the banker's only option is a war. That is the only racket that they make uh, tons and tons of money on because they're selling to both sides of the war. Uh, they're loaning out huge amounts of money, and they're collecting huge amounts through productivity of weapons supplies and all sorts of crap. It's their only, it's their oh, yeah, last well, best racket. And, and I think I was telling you that I, I just listened to an interview by uh, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. He said that the Afghanistan and the Iraq war were minimum three trillion dollar cost each. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it. Someone please go out and make a garden. Uh, buy some silver, get a gun. Uh, the S is going to hit the fan. It, it's it, it's it's getting close. You're right. It this can't keep up. And um, 
I don't know. That's all I got. Yeah, I mean, it's. I, I would just end with the fact that we are getting, if you can't really tell by just living your daily life that it's getting close to just simple inflation uh, taken off. I've talked to friends recently. They're, they're, now, they're now seeing things in the stores where the price has just jumped big time, uh, and they hadn't noticed that until just recently. So, yeah. uh, you know. They, they make it so it just creeps up, creeping, creeping. And then all and of a sudden you wake up and, like, bread's $3? What? Exactly. Um, uh, you know, a block of cheese, I think, at Walmart, uh, you know, average cheese, a big block of it, was uh, $17. I'm like, Gosh. are you kidding me? I mean, a pretty yeah. big block of cheese, but still, I mean, um, where it once was, you know, ten dollars is now it's it's out of hand. Well, I think people uh, they're it's slowly creeping into their me me mentality, uh, their thinking, I guess. You know, they they're torn between what the government tells them and what their pocketbook tells them. I think they need to start listening to the reality. You know, and I have uh, two two dogs that I feed, and I notice it in dog food the most. Um, no. You know, twenty dollars for this little bag of, of dog food uh, was my usual payment, uh, but now it doesn't last because you know they keep, they charge you the twenty dollars for the same bag, but they don't put as much product in there. Uh. You know, I think you know what uh, Catherine Austin Fitz said. You know, it's it's twenty five percent less. Estimating on products across the board, they're charging okay. more for less. Right. So. Well, what know. they're doing is they're just hiding the inflation uh, reality because the, the the corporations are not going to, uh, you know, they're not going to cut into their bottom line if if they can all at all help it, and they know that people are. Uh, kind of running around like zombies buying stuff, they don't realize it right away that their their value is going right through the floor. Yeah. All right, Colin. I got to uh, well, sign out here. I think but, so. Uh, tell, your, tell your dog that they're on a diet, okay? No, um, they're, they're good. I spoil them. Anyways, uh, <laughs> make sure everyone goes to the website. Uh, RustusMetals.com. Uh, buy a T-shirt from the Gearology, Colin Hayward's uh, company, and um, you know that's how we make money. You know, buying products from the site. Um, I don't think there's a donation button, but you know, I don't expect anything for free. Go out and buy something. Uh, there's plenty of bullion banks uh, that I have on the website. Uh, buy buy something from them. And to help Colin out by buying a T-shirt, he's working hard over there. And um, I'll talk to you soon, Colin, next week. Uh, and maybe uh, we might see that 18 and a half uh, in silver. And I hope everyone buys a sleeve of dimes this week. That sounds like a good objective, a uh, good goal there. Get a get a sleeve of dimes, and uh, it's also a, it will be a stand-in for a, a defensive weapon, I guess, in, in case somebody's trying to take it from you. Yeah, well, you got to have a gun to protect it, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm signing off. See you later, NSA. Colin, I, I appreciate you, and um, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know we're being watched, so. It's a fact now. I'll, well, <laughs> I'll talk to you real soon. <laughs> talk to you soon. Uh, it's just a computer, I hope. Otherwise, somebody's going to get bored out of their mind listening to all these oh, YouTube yeah. videos. Who are they thinking? They're going to watch us for half an hour? Crazy? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Signing out, Colin. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good week.